Everyone knows about the Glock pistol, and where it got started was the Glock field knife. The Glock field knife was one of Gadsden Glock's first creations. Uh, he made these for the Austrian military. In fact, these fit as a bayonet on the Steyr AUG. These have been very popular with survivalists and preppers, uh, but also has served in military units all over the world. Uh, this is the FM-81, which denotes that this was met, designed in 1981, and then the earlier model without the sawtooth is the FM-78. These are really good quality knives, but the best thing about these is they run about $30 dollars give or take a couple of dollars here or there so these are very budget friendly easy to put into a pack and it's glock quality now guys this is one of the original glock knives that i bought probably 20 years ago uh, it does have the uh, desert sand color to it and uh, polymer on the grip polymer on the sheath and you have a little catch here you actually get a hold of the guard and just push up on it and it pops it open and you can tell it's a really solid lock up uh, but the sheath itself, we're going to take a look at first. I, this is a little catch here, very secure. It locks into place. It accommodates about a two and a, a quarter inch belt. And uh, these sheaths are very the same as the others. They're the same as the newer models. Uh, and then we have the Glock knife itself. Now, one of the things that will denote this being an early model is that the logo is actually a circle. And so that tells you that this is one of the early productions. Uh, with the later productions, here we have an OD green. You can see that it has the standard Glock logo. And I'm not sure when that changed, but that's definitely something, you know, that'll tell you whether this is an older or a newer style knife. Now, these are being used by uh, a number of different armies around the world, including Austria, which these are made, and then Germany, India, Denmark, and a host of other countries, including South Korea. And then we have the FM-78, which has just a smooth spine. Now, because this is the FM-78, I'm pretty sure that these were first designed in 78, and then the sawtooth was in 1981. Uh, it is a bayonet design. In fact, this is a bayonet. A lot of people were wondering if this has been uh, removed, the, the ring for the bayonet, but actually it goes into the back and we're going to take a look at that. One of the things about these knives, though, is when they come in, they're typically not that sharp. Uh, this one has a lot of protective coating on it still from the factory because I've not used this one. And one of the big reasons is uh, this is actually signed by R. Lee Ermey. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. This is one that's just in my collection. This is the only one that I have that's the Model 78. The blade is made from spring steel, and it's 1095 tool steel. Uh, it has a Rockwell hardness of 55, and then they do a uh, electro finish on it. This one has a little bit more of a dull finish than a lot of the newer ones, but the sawtooth blade is really wide, and so you're not going to get a really sharp cut on that, but we'll do some field testing in a minute. Also, this can be used as a bottle opener, and you can also use these ends as to pry different crates, ammo crates, things like that. Now part of the blade actually fits all the way down to this notch. And then from here, we have a tube that comes all the way up. And that's where you're gonna fit this to a bayonet adapter. Uh, here we have just a cap on the end. This is removable, but it's fairly difficult. But we're gonna show you that in just a minute. It does have a swedge that comes at the top. And of course, this can be sharpened as well. Uh, this is an excellent knife for self-defense. It's a good knife for piercing, stabbing, uh, but it's also good for batoning wood. Uh, you can use it for feathering, but it just really doesn't have enough belly for it to be a chopper. This is definitely not a chopper, but there are a lot of good f uses for this. Now, one of the big things about these knives, being Glock knives, they're definitely proven, but this is not necessarily the ultimate survival knife. Uh, it's an excellent knife to have in your pack. You can use it for a lot of things. But to me, I would probably go with something a little larger, a little more of a belly to it that could do a little more chopping uh, for just a standard field survival knife. Now, the blade length is six and a half inches. Uh, the weight on it is 7.1 ounces. So it's a really lightweight knife, and yet it's really a capable knife. Uh, on the FM78, it weighs just a touch more because it doesn't have these cuts uh, out of the top of the blade. Now, here we have one that's kind of an OD brown color. Uh, you can see the finish on here, and this is one of the later models. But uh, it just has more of a bluing finish than the standard anodized finish of the original blade. And again, these were used and issued to a lot of military forces, and most of those had that anodized finish on it. And here are the different colors, the OD, the black, the desert sand, and then this brown field earth color. 
Now these end caps are in pretty solid. In fact, they're fairly difficult to get loose. And uh, I did pry this one. Uh, one of the things you want to take maybe is a blade that's not too, too sharp. And it will break off the tip if you're not careful. So you just want to kind of go around and just kind of start prying, taking your time. And we're going to go ahead and see what's in this. Originally, I did put a punch in here and kind of push it up. And so you're going to see a little bit of deformation. But I just wanted to kind of show you how to get these off because it is a little bit of a trick. And you just pull the cap off and it does have a little collar to it. Now here you'll notice that there is a tube right here and it is metal. It goes down again about right to the second uh, ring. And so this is what fits into the adapter on the Steyr AUG. I'm not sure what others it might fit, but uh, definitely uh, that's one of the things that Glock did was design field knives and entrenching tools before he got into firearms for the Austrian Army. And so fitting the Steyr AUG is a no-brainer. You do have these holes on either side, and those are definitely for probably trying to get this out. This is not easy to get out, which makes it kind of funny that they wouldn't make this a little easier. And then you can just put your cap back on if you want, or you can leave it. You can actually put items in here uh, for survival if you want to. But just press it down. It doesn't quite fit quite as close as the original. <laughs> but, you know, if you want to get into it, that's how you do it. Also, one thing you can do is actually put a stick through here if you want to use this for a spear, tie it down. And so that's another good purpose for using that hole because you do have that steel collar. And so it's going to help to give you some rigidity. Now this old piece of cedar. I'm just going to do some testing. You can get some feathering with this. This one in particular I think has been sharpened a little more. But uh, it's been a while. But you can definitely get some fire tender out of this if you need to. Now let's test out the saw blade. The way it's shaped, it goes forward. So as you push, it's going to be fairly wide. If it was narrow, it would cut better. But if you want to notch, I mean, that comes out a pretty decent notch. Uh, but you could notch this, use this size. It is very thick. And so that's going to definitely hinder it from cutting really deep. As you can see, that's really a clean cut. That's going to be for limited use. Now we've got it jammed into this wood. We're going to try drawing. It's a pretty good drawing knife. We have a seasoned piece of wood here. Um, I already did one. I had the camera cut off. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how this works. Yep, does really well. Not necessarily as much. I think because of the thin blade size, it actually helps. Um, I think a thinner blade would actually cut a little better, but it has that strength to be able to hold up. But as far as chopping, guys, this is not your chopper. You need that belly. This would wear you out. Yeah, you could do small limbs. And to be honest with you, you can do it. But it's gonna really take a lot of strength when you're in the field, you don't need to waste all your energy. Now, the Glock field knife can be used for throwing, so we're gonna do some testing, see what we can do. Now when it comes to throwing, guys, the best thing to do is to grab it by the blade. That works the best. Honestly, 80% uh, of the time, it was sticking into the board. 
uh, which was really surprising. Uh, I'm not really great at throwing knives, but uh, this makes it easy. But it definitely has some wear on it from hitting that concrete. But overall, still in good shape. So guys, at a price for around $30 for an excellent quality knife, uh, this is great to put away in your packs and different things. And uh, of course, a number of colors, and then you can get it with the saw blade or without. And um, guys, I'll tell you, this is an excellent knife for the price. Uh, yeah, that does have its limitations. I mean, it's not a chopper, but it definitely gives you a lot of options, as we've shown, uh, to get you through some tough situations. Guys, if you're serious about prepping and survival, check out Survival Dispatch Insider, one of the best resources on the web using many world-renowned contributors. We upload one video that's exclusive to the Insider every week. I'll have a link down below in the description. Check it out. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.